got your wig, I got your wig, ho. Ha <laughs> ha. You're mad. Miss wig, miss wig. I got your wig, I got your wig, ho. I got your wig, I got your wig, ho. Miss wig, Yana. I got your wig, I got your wig, ho. เขาถามว่าเป็นเพศอะไรอ่ะคุณตอบได้ใช่มั้ยใช่ค่ะตอบได้ทรานส์เจนเดอร์โอ้ยังยังเลยเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลา
and every 20 years you got to switch them out. So I have to do a surgery, pause, oral, and uh, the fucked up shit is once they do it, it's shit. And yeah, so I'm going to show you a lot. Okay, I got. So that's what happened, the prince. But, you know, I thought it was hilarious. I ain't tried to edit it. I think it's good for jokes and shit. Um, but yeah, they're not dentists, and I think it's hilarious. Jim, do black men marry white women because of the nature of black women? I know in some of our earlier conversations, you mentioned that the black women you've met have been uptight. What do you mean by that? Well, uh... I'll answer the one question, what do I mean by uptight? Going toward a more militant uh, attitude about their own identity. Um, and, and in many ways, are way ahead of the black man. Because, uh, um, I don't know why, but uh, uh, in many ways are replacing the black man. There, there, there's a whole, uh, there's an almost an un unfeminine aspect of the the uh, the black militant woman. Do you find that uh, some black women you've known out of your personal experience uh, blame the black man for, for what happened to them in slavery even today? Of course. Uh, you know, if, if, if the black man regardless of, of the, the causes failed to protect her left her in, in, in a position where she had to sell herself or bar, a bargain with, with her body and so on. Yes, uh, you know, she, she had, there, there's resentment about that. But um, it, it's very complex now, you see. Uh, I, I think in, in, an, in another generation, you go, you go, you, you, you'll get a, a whole crop uptight about their position in society. Uh, there are uh, many because I'm general, generalizing now. Many are overreacting against Aunt Jemima, the Aunt Jemima image, the submissive um, Mother Earth type, uh, unselfish, uh, all giving, especially all giving to the white man, sexually and uh, in the kitchen and every, every other way. And uh, uh, she's also overreacting against the uh, problem of having to be the breadwinner, uh, the matriarch of the house. Don't you think that's changed a lot in this, especially since the Spike Lee period? I mean, there's a very, very different sensibility on screen now, Jimmy, in terms But you of see, uh, the, 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 the bad habits are not, not just from the white establishment. The bad habits are also with black women who hate to see a star who's black married to a, 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 a wife who's white. That the bad habit there, that not just now beginning to be indulged in. I mean, everybody wants to squeeze as much juice out of that racist thing, that racist pomegranate that they can, and blacks are not above it. I am a young black rich. If that don't let you know that America understand black matter these days, I don't know what it is. Don't come at me with that dumb man. My life matter, especially to my. Do you separate yourself from it? I don't feel connected to a damn thing that ain't got nothing to do with me. If you do, you crazy as You. I'm connected to this flag right As I'm connected, I'm a gangbanger, man. I'm connected. Listen, I love Kendrick Lamar. I love the pop-up. I think he's one of the top artists of this generation, period. Hate this election. It's in New Orleans. You don't get little Wayne. You. That's what we doing? Yeah. Listen, yeah. you don't get Little Wayne in New Orleans for the hot Super Bowl. Boys. Boy. Not just Hot Boys, Cash Money. All the songs Little Wayne's done, whether it's Blink 182, there's no reason why Little Wayne should not be performing in the Super Bowl. There's one person who's stopping this. I know, you know, it's not really, it's not really a secret. Little Wayne had a problem with somebody before who's kind of part of the organization running it. This is payback. Who's that? Who's Lil Wayne artist? Drake. 
Yeah, that, not, this is this hating is, at this, this age is it, crazy. It's crazy, yeah. bro. Bro, bro, it's ridiculous. Like hating Mike, Mike, this Mike, Mike, there's some hip hop shit that you probably don't know what's going on. To be totally honest with you, yeah. so we'll school you behind the scenes. Little Wayne, no, not the be performing in New Orleans for the Super Bowl, is egregious, and it gotta stop. I can do that. It, it gotta stop. Mike Bills will tell you what's going on later. It gotta stop, bro. It gotta stop. So everybody want me to speak on this Super Bowl situation. Look, I'm mad about the situation just like y'all, man, but, you know, my hatred is toward the NFL. You know, not really, not really the people that booked the halftime show. I'm mad at the people that hired the motherfuckers that booked the halftime show. I feel like y'all should step in. Y'all done through 11 Super Bowls in New Orleans, man. Y'all have yet to put a hip-hop artist from New Orleans on the damn Super Bowl. Sure, y'all have put artists on the Super Bowl back in the days. So y'all hurt. Uh, and uh, the list goes on. Not too many. Not too many. You know, I feel like every time y'all come here, y'all should have somebody from our city on the shit. But this time, it really stick hit hard when you don't have Lil Wayne on the show. I don't see how the fuck y'all don't have Lil Wayne doing a halftime show. Somebody that has a whole bunch of fucking hits and somebody that really deserves it and somebody that can bring out multiple artists of all genres. Think about it. So this goes to you, Roger Goodell. You need to get it right, man. You coming in our city, sucking up our cultures and making up all this money and putting all this bread in your pocket, putting all this bread in other people's pockets and walk and leaving us dry, hanging us dry. You got to stop. But I do see like people blaming it like solely on Jay-Z when I don't think that's the truth. I think um, it's a committee. It's a board. I feel like it's different people who come into play when decisions like that are, ha are made. Uh, I do think it would have been great for Lil Wayne to be, um, you know, just because of how much he's done in the game and how much he's meant to New Orleans. And, you know, that would have been a, a great opportunity. Never know if he's going to be included, if that was something that was behind the scenes. I think it was injured interesting that Kendrick got it after the the Drake battle and shit too. I think that's more something that should be talked about. Dude pointed something out and he was just like, you know, a lot of these whole pow pals come from Drake, you worked on the Beyonce house album. And then you did and then a house you went album. And did a house album and dropped it right before hers. And they ain't like that. Hmm. Like I wouldn't like that if I'm them. I wouldn't. Because like you got to understand, we're dealing with the power part of money, power, respect. Mm -hmm. That's the part that we have to focus on. People with power are going to exert it now. Like, when this much is at, at play. So, yeah, I don't think they like that shit. I don't know what's behind it, but they ain't like that move, that little house album, after you worked on my shit. Hell no. I, I also got a little bit of tea. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What's it? Spill it. Come on now. Eh. Eh. It's hot tea. Oh, we're ready. I'm sure you, you got are. You got the straw? You, 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 <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. You put a little more water. You can water down the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Cam and them kind of alluded to there being some behind this, something behind the scenes at play between the parties involved. And I don't know if I got the same tea as him. But I'm hearing that there was an event where something happened backstage that yeah. Between whom? I can't, I can't say. Yeah. I can't say because the tea is too hot. But so something cool. happened backstage at one of them shows. Put some milk in it, nigga. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the salt. Put, some, put something different. Come on, you gotta get it. stupid. Put yeah. some milk in it. Put some milk in it. No, because it's, it's the hottest of teas. It's oh, okay. The, it's okay. the hottest okay. of teas. Oh, you can't cool oh, it down. It's the scorching. No, right? there's yeah, no yeah, way yeah. to new addition that one. I'll have a tea. You, you can't. But, the, but these things are at play. Like, Can you say what, not who, but what happened? Was there argument, a disagreement? There was something that went on backstage that would affect the decision-making and makers of yeah. events like this. And mm -hmm. it just contributes to the reputation that Wayne has for being inconsistent. 
I don't yes, know if he maybe. has that. I don't know if he has that reputation. Well, I mean, we were we just what you just read talking about the fact he didn't show up to any rehearsals, the fact that they well, that's can't, one person's account. Yeah. I don't want to make yeah, that broad yeah, stroke. That's, right. that's one I mean, person's but that's, account. But the Grammys is a really big deal. So the fact that we're talking about the Super Bowl, we're talking about big stages, and if you have you know even the smallest reputation of being inconsistent, where people aren't going to know how you're going to show up if you're going to the show up. The music business is very small, and at yeah. this level, it is tiny. Yes. Mm -hmm. These mega, mega, huge corporate they talk. events, yes. they this talk. is a very fucking small circle. Mm -hmm. So yes. if any type of reputation is out there, it ain't going to bode well for you. Right. And I want to preface this. I want to preface everything I say with... <clears throat> pardon me. I want to preface everything I say with... I'm upset that we announce a black hip-hop halftime performer mm -hmm. and we just muddy the water with who we think should have been yeah, or who nice. y'all think should have been the black performers. Some of y'all out there, it's y'all young kids that got platforms now. Y'all wasn't even alive for the 100 years of Kid Rock and Guns N' Roses. And, 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 and I think there's some interesting parts to this that everyone's missing. This isn't about Meg collabing with Cardi. This isn't about whatever stupid ass excuse that he's making about her telling her to get an abortion and have a drink or whatever the fuck. This is about Jay-Z. When you really, really, really dig down into it, Nikki be like sweating Jay in a different type of way. Like low key, she be like low key on his dick. Like it's so funny. I'm I'm really good at reading body language and stuff like that i could see in the feeling myself video like beyonce's kind of just like laughing at her like huh bitch yeah like you wish and when they did the performance together <laughs> beyonce's like no i'm gonna wear pink you wear black she's like oh nico <laughs> it's funny it's funny like beyonce's just sunning her like uh -huh, like little bitch you know um jay-z has kind of positioned himself in this way where um, Almost every type of female artist, female urban artist, feels like she needs his approval. Nikki wants to be a Rock Nation girl. Bad. That's what this beef is about. She want to be a Rock Nation girl so fucking bad. Like, you know, dating Nas. Like, it's just like, yeah. When you really pay attention, like her pitter-pattering around and the way she's always like, that's why Jane Clear's verse for your album is just like, why you fucking care? When did you get a Jay-Z verse on your fucking record? Like, you know what I'm saying? But, and on top of that, like, it's been years, years since Jay-Z has co-signed, publicly co-signed any female rapper. And the fact that it's Megan, like, it could be anybody, you know what I mean? It could be, it could be fucking me, you know what I mean? It could be bad baby, it could be whoever. The fact that someone, some girl that is not Nikki got Jay-Z's public cosign, some female rapper that's not Nikki got Jay-Z's public cosign, makes Nikki jealous. It makes her feel jealous um, and it makes her feel kind of alone. If you like pay attention, like when these things kind of happen, all of those like young money guys are like kind of nowhere to be found, you know? They say you look like Rihanna. She hates me. Why? Because I worked with her a few years ago on, uh, this is when she had her foundation right before she launched her, uh, her, uh, her, uh, what was it at that time that Fenty? But no, I think it was before the Fenty because it was whatever Kylie came out with. They, they were they all went in fucking cahoots. They were all arguing with each other, and that was when Kim came out with her line. Kylie came out with her line. Um, but Rihanna had this foundation back in 2015, and it was um, her white gala. And that was when she kind of like was sponsored on um, med beds, high tech, all that. Well, I helped fundraise her gala here in, um, in Hollywood. Well, she was fucking my boss. 
and gave my boss chlamydia. And here I am, the hoe, alleged hoe. Yeah, I am a hoe. But everyone thought that I was the one fucking my boss and in all reality, it was this bitch. And so it just literally got to the point where all that shit came out that she got him sick that because he was married he was he's a he's a keep you your seat on or behind you you don't have to put that behind you um he's a king or uh he's a prince in africa and so he came out here back in 2013 worked with global canvasser which was a non-profit and then worked with UNICEF in the United Nations. That's where I got on and I was able to partner with UNICEF in the United Nations. So I lived out in Australia for a little bit working with this corporation. Well, right before that, they were fucking around. She, I think she was, I don't know if it was Travis, I don't, I don't know who the fuck Rihanna was fucking, but got dirty and got him dirty. And it was this whole fucking, this whole thing. Well, she had her gala, and here I am, it was her white party gala. I'm dressed, I'm ready, I'm going after raising so much money for her thing, for his thing, for the company's thing. I show up, sorry Harley, but Rihanna said that you can't get in. Okay, okay, cool, okay, cool. And that was, uh, that was in 2016, and then after that I ended up partnering more on board with uh, her her ex-boss mm. and his name is Lamac Lamac Tobias what the fuck are you doing you fat fuck <laughs> no that was my late uh. but uh, yeah she hates me there's that foundation song that she came out with and that was like I, I don't I don't lie about this shit like it's to the point like even if I wanted to lie I can't even make up a lie to lie about it yeah but uh, I want her to like me. Tamara and Teddy were talking about us on their podcast. Tamara said, oh, I reached out to Kiki Monique. And Teddy was like, oh, what about Sheena? And then Tamara <laughs> was like, no, I come out one day. I turn my phone on and I'm seeing these DMs come in from Tamara. And she was like, were you just hosting Radio Andy? I said, uh, no. I said, I'm at the Tom Girardi trial. I said, like, why? She goes, were you hosting when someone called in and called Alexis a whore and told and said that I was a piece of shit. I said, I'm not hosting. I'm at this trial. And she's like, I was so mad. I contacted Andy because I'm just really... And, and so I was like, then I was like, what? Are you trying to get us fired from right? our jobs? I'm like, what is happening? I said, it wasn't me. But I said, in the future, like, if I ever piss you off, can you come to me first without yeah. trying to get me fired? Because I really need my job. I don't know um, Ashley or Giselle that well. Uh, of course, I've seen them at BravoCon and things like that. Shannon, I, I did a little bit more work with. I can't remember exactly where, but we were changing together in some hotel room. <laughs> so you remember. know each other. Okay, yeah, so you, we know each other. Yeah. We saw each other's derrieres. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good foreshadowing for a dating show. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, um, so, yeah, I'm super excited about this. And, you know, it's just the four of us. And, and I don't know how many guys they're bringing around. No, I did that I don't know. Mm -hmm. You and Shannon, you've known each other for a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is such a great moment for her, too, because she has been through the ringer with John Jansen and I Alexis know. Bellino. What is your take on that whole situation as her friend? And it just, it seems like this love triangle drama mess is just... It's horrible. Up the Bravo verse. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, it, that's got to hurt, right? Yeah. I mean, and, you know, this guy, I mean, what kind of guy does a thing like that? I know. Right? I know. Yeah. On yeah. the same TV yeah. show now we are. It's like, really? Yeah. yeah it's oh, I would, I would hate it. I would, I would really have a tough time with it kind of been scorned by this guy. I'm yeah. not even gonna blame the woman. Well, I don't know if I'd blame the woman. <laughs> Have you met Alexis? I think Polino? it takes two to tango, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know Alexis at all? No, not okay. at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't no, want to see her derriere. But I'm not. But I'm not going to bring my boyfriend around. Her. Yeah. <laughs> that whole thing where he's like, he's bashing your spending, but you're the one who pays I'm all the bills. I'm, I'm the one that pays all the bills. All the kids' clothes, all the school, all the school clothes, all the most of the food we do every other night. So he doesn't have any room to speak. He has not much. paid a bill in that house. He's paid two electric bills in the last eighteen months on a cable, a water, a phone, nothing. Nothing. That man has not paid a bill in that house. What, Brielle? Yeah, Brielle's Brielle's helped more than. What's that? Real tells more than. Oh, so. So you're. Okay. 
Bri also, you're, I mean, you're helping, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Let me ask you this. Because I will you, not. Look, I know. Look, I know it's tough, and he's filing motions. He wants to sell the house without you, and he just. Is it? Is it vindictive? Yeah, is it vindictive, though? Yes, do you that's feel all like? He's doing. This, yes, it's just a game. It's just. He said that if I ever divorced him, he would just run me publicly. And you feel like that's what he's doing? It's, no, it's not work. It's not going to. People no, but is that what he's trying to do? It's not going to work. Yeah. I, I, I assume, like the party. No, we haven't gone out with my friends. Uh, my birthday or Kentucky Derby party. Uh -huh. That's about it. I don't yeah. go out. Yeah. I have four kids and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just keep my mouth shut. He can go like, on. He's always wanting to work it out. In my room yesterday, trying to work it out. He's trying to work it out. Yep. So it's not going make sense. And are you open to working it out? Or it's just, it's done, it's done? No. No, I don't know. How about selling the house and just kind of starting fresh? Yeah, we're trying to sell the house. I mean, so he says that you're not willing to take reasonable offers. Who would take a $3.5 million offer on a $5.5 million appraisal? Nobody. Nobody. Right? All right. I can I can see that. He's got his $1.5 million uh, 401k, pension, whatever else. So he's, so he's fine. So he's hoarded all his money, and I've spent all my taking care of my family. Oh, because he, he gets the NFL pension, right? My mother has always said that he's, I hate to use this word, she's always said that he's a faggot. Who said that? Say, my mother. She would always say this. And I would always say, Mother, you shouldn't say that. And she said, Well, he is. And she would always say that. The manager at the time went to them and eventually got them to let me go, but they kept every song that I wrote, kept the whole album. And I, mind you, at this time, I really don't know nothing about publishing and none of that. So I don't even care. I'm like, fine. I'm just, I just want to be free. A few months after that, right? I'm actually driving en route to a job interview and a song comes on the radio. That song was supposed to be my first single when I was signed to Columbia Records and they gave it to Marcus Houston. Didn't tell me, I got no money, no nothing. Just like my foot was right in the door, I was right there. Yeah, Marcus Houston. Couldn't go not use the material. It was, it was good music, it was good Who material. Wrote that? I did. But I, no, wait, I, wait, wait, I, are you not deep on Yeah. So you wrote it? Yeah. And they've given it to him? Yes. And it was meant to be for you? Yes. And they didn't tell you this? No, no. And how on earth is the first time you're hearing your... What was your feeling that you were going through when you were in the car and you had your lyrics? You know what? It was... It That's was ridiculous. Like, you know that? It was cool, but not cool. Because my they kept my they kept all my background <laughs> vocals. My voice is on the record. No they way. kept all my background vocals the whole night. I don't know what happened in 1990. There was no plague that was killing children that we had to triple the amount of vaccines. What Let's happened after smart. 1989? The and why did they triple? More into 26 more vaccines. Greed. Are all of them Great. absolutely necessary? Because they want to make money. Of course. Okay. It's twice as many as anywhere else in uh, in 30 countries in the Western world. But uh, We give twice as many shots as any of those countries. Why is that? Well, what, what are you against? Don't vaccinate for this, but vaccinate for that? Yes. I think we have to choose which well, ones are absolutely know which necessary. One? You, should, well, you should educate yourself. We want to empower parents to educate themselves. Do we need to have the chicken pox? Do we need the hepatitis B shot on the second day of life? I don't think we can afford to assume that the people who are charged with our, our public health any longer ha have our best interests at heart all the time. Parents have to, have to make their own decisions, educated decisions. They have to look at the information. Space out the vaccines, delay them till after one, clean out the toxins that are in them. We don't need that many. Why would a doctor not want to know more about something that could save that could save a life or prevent a disease? I don't, I don't understand. Uh, the AAP is financed by the drug companies. Uh, medical drug schools companies are financed by the drug this companies. Going. This is a huge business. Vaccines are the largest growing division of the pharmaceutical industry. Thirteen billion dollars. They control profit. medical schools. What we're asking is for them to take a loss for the good of our children. That's a tough sell in a boardroom. I mean, my dad works in insurance and my insurance is free. Hello. Hello. So in some ways. But was Cooper originally all auditioned all for Eversol? I'm insurance. You know, he wasn't because he, I think he, we cold read that scene. We didn't think we would bump oh, into each right. other at the yeah, same yeah. time. Oh. I had auditioned and then you asked me, we were like, hang out for a couple minutes. I go outside. I see Cooper in the waiting room. And I'm like, I hope he's not auditioning for Lauren. And because uh, he's so good. And then he's not. Who is he auditioning? Yes. I'm like, why they took this boy Jerry's? Why would you do something like this? Look at <laughs> She got him snoring. Look, look, look at him. 
She showed me this stuff. Look, she got this red box. I'm gonna show you. She got him snoring in the bed, girl. I couldn't believe this. Don't lie. Look at him. He's snoring. He's snoring. Look, 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 look what she's saying. Come to that mansion and take that shit. Nigga, take that pet from you. You know where your money at? It's where your money at, right here. You see where your money at? You see where your money at? You see where your money at? See, they send me all the stuff. I ain't, look, look, look at her with the money. Look. She sold it. She sold it. She sold it, y'all. She sold it. That's what she said. She said she sold it. Child, she gonna have a bag on her head. Let me see. She sold it. And then look at him laying there with his grills out. And then look at him. Look, 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 look at this. He got his grills in his mouth. She laying there bald-headed. Y'all gonna learn. She could've put that dairy in somebody else's room while you trick off. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Then he's snowing like crazy. Hold on. was something that he was interested in how would you feel it's about him yeah if that's what he wants but i would say he has to wait till he's of age and still make sure that's something he wants to do whatever you do is very difficult but the the <clears throat> industry mm. is very tough it's mm. brutal but he would have to wait till he's 18. yeah I, 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 yeah I don't blame you i know that you're not a supporter of donald trump's he loves your music how did it feel when he took the lyrics to rocket man and he used it as a nickname for Kim Jong Un, and then he gave Kim Jong Un. <laughs> I a laughed. CD. I thought it was brilliant. I just thought, <laughs> "Good on you, Donald. I'm the Rocket Man." Yeah. Um, I mean, Donald's always been a fan of mine, and he's been to my concerts many, many times. Um, so I mean, I've always been friendly towards him, and I, I, I thank him for his uh, support. Yeah. When he did that, I just thought it was hilarious. It was it made me laugh. He gave he gave Kim one of your CDs and signed it. That was that was in one of the books about him because Kim, I guess, didn't know the song, so. What's that? He gave Kim Jong Un the signed CD. Yes. You know, which yeah. he well, never it, heard of it. it. I, I know, because he hasn't heard of me, Kim Jong Un. Maybe I'd be very surprised <laughs> if he had. Um, I've never toured North Korea, and I have no intention of doing so. Um, but uh, it, it was, I thought it was a light moment, and it was fun. Hey guys, I love answering all your questions, but I'm getting bombarded with this Vicky shit. Like, I don't give a shit. This woman is uh, disgusting and every sense of the word um, to go after my family and everything. That's what she does. I don't know why she's doing it. Maybe she needs a little tension. Maybe someone needs to pat her, pat her back like a little puppy, but I'm not going to do it. Um, listen, I'm not going to take parent advice from a woman that um, chose her boyfriend Brooks over her own daughter, a woman that had a boyfriend that told Ryan he should beat his wife to keep her in line and to stay with him. Like, to me, that's disgusting. What has happened in my relationship through my divorce and my kids is very tragic and sad. And um, for her to even talk about it is disgusting. So Vicki, go away, leave me alone. I'm gonna ask you for the last time, leave me alone. Nobody cares what you have to say, ever. Go away. Somebody's asking me to make up with Vicky. First of all, I've never gotten in a fight with Vicky. I don't know what she's doing or why she's doing it, but it's my understanding she did something really, really nasty across the line to the point where it's been sent to my attorneys. So I don't know what her problem is with me, but I'm begging you from the deepest part of my heart to leave me alone. I'm not. Do, I'm not saying anything about you. I don't. I don't want to say anything about you. What you're doing is so sad and so disgusting. It was just you couple episodes ago saying you're a woman of God and should not be doing this. So what are you doing? And why are you doing this? What are you getting out of it? Because all that you're doing is hurting me and hurting my family. So please, I'm begging you, please leave us alone.
Everybody give her a round of applause, please. Yes, I have, I have. You're, you're right. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody say it. God bless you. Okay. Uh, yeah. God bless you. God bless you. I love you too. You know what? Just let me address that. You know, Rome wasn't made in a day. And sometimes when you have plans to change things, change things in, in, in situations, you have to get in a position of power and of influence where you can change people's minds and help progression. That's not necessarily the way to do it. And sitting in my position, when I have conversations on behalf of organizations like that, unbeknownst to them, they come out here and do themselves a disservice. But that's okay. When that change comes, everybody in this room will remember that I told you we're actually working on that. And if she would have just asked me, I would have told her. But instead, she wanted to repeat herself. Can I hear me? I could never give you a 10 because mm -hmm. I don't like you. So bro, mm -hmm. I always got to keep something negative minute, in, in reference to you. So I can never give you a, you can never get that 10, okay? You can never get that 10. Mm -hmm. But I'll give you about an eight and a half. Okay. Well, not, you know what? It's, it's not a 10, it's a seven. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. 14 or 15 different policies. Like she was big on defund the police. In Minnesota, she went out. Wait a minute. I'm talking now. If you don't mind, please. Does that sound familiar? She went out. She went out in Minnesota. Ew. Uh, like JK, but like maybe not. But thank you for watching. But you hating ass bitches always have something to say. Hating ass bitch, but you're still watching my vids. What? Okay, because have a piece of bread, have a Xanax, relax, because I said what I said.